we are going to be making black forest cake. Welcome to another episode of The Scran Line. I am going to be showing you guys how to make a really delicious cake today. Black forest cake is like a marriage of cream and chocolate and cherries. If you want to make the naughty version or the traditional version, it has some cherry liqueur in there as well. We're going to begin by making the sponge, but before we do, I want to quickly remind you guys to hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the like button so that YouTube lets other people know about this video as well. This sponge cake is really soft, it's really moist, and it is a little bit more spongy and less dense than my regular cake recipe. That's what makes it so great for soaking in that cherry liqueur. We're gonna be adding some all-purpose flour and cocoa powder into a sift, which is sitting on top of a large mixing bowl. We're gonna sift those ingredients together into the bowl and set it aside. Now, you'll notice there are no raising agents in the dry ingredients, and that's because we rely on the eggs to help this cake rise. So we're going to be adding some eggs, a lot of eggs actually, into the bowl of a stand mixer. I'm going to be using a stand mixer today because it is a lot of eggs. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can use an electric can mixer, but a stand mixer is a lot easier. So add your eggs into the bowl of your stand mixer. I'm going to fit it with the whisk attachment and we're going to whip these up for a couple minutes. After a couple minutes, once they're nice and frothy, we're gonna be adding the sugar. Now, it's really important that you add the sugar a little bit at a time to help that sugar dissolve in the eggs before you add the rest of the sugar. So we're gonna be adding one tablespoon at a time. Add your tablespoon in, let it mix for about 10 seconds, and then add the next tablespoon in very slowly. When you lift up the balloon whisk or the whisk attachment from your mixer, it's gonna kind of drip down like a ribbon. That's how nice and thick you want this mixture to be. Once you have it that nice and thick, and it should take around 10 minutes, we're ready to add our dry ingredients. Now, we're gonna be adding our dry ingredients half at a time. So you wanna add the first half, use a spatula to gently fold it into that mixture, and then add the rest of the dry ingredients and repeat. Now, it's really important to keep in mind as you are folding those dry ingredients through the egg, that they're gonna wanna sink to the bottom of your bowl. So make sure that when you are folding, you're keeping in mind that there are a lot of dry ingredients hiding at the bottom of the bowl. So make sure you're scraping from the bottom when you do fold. When you do add other ingredients into the egg mixture, it's going to deflate a little bit. That's completely normal. The last ingredient we're gonna add after we've added the flour is some melted butter. It's really important that you melt your butter before you start any of this so that it has time to cool down to room temperature. If you're adding really warm or even hot butter to this mixture, it's going to completely deflate and your cakes won't be nice and fluffy. So you're going to very slowly add that melted room temperature butter to your cake mixture as you're folding. And then once it's all in there, we've finished with our butter. I've got two eight inch cake tins, which I've sprayed just the bottom, not the sides, with some oil spray. And then I'm going to line the bottom with some baking paper. If you want to learn more about how to line your baking tins or cake tins when you're baking, I've actually made a video on that so that you can get perfect results every time. Now usually I do spray the outside of my cake tins as well, but for this recipe it's important not to do that because you want the cake to kind of stick to the sides as it bakes. Otherwise if you add oil, it's going to come away from the sides and it's gonna kind of get a weird shape. So don't spray the sides. We're gonna bake these and then let them cool down completely. Now it's best to use these cakes the day that you actually bake them. But if you wanna prepare the cake before you actually serve the cake and put it together, you can wrap these up in plastic wrap and then pop them in the fridge. Make sure that they're cooled though. We are gonna be making a simple syrup to soak this cake in and it's gonna have that cherry liqueur in there as well. 
To make this simple syrup though, really, really easy, you're just gonna add equal parts sugar and water into a large microwave safe bowl. You're gonna add, well, you wanna start off with boiling water, then use a whisk to whisk these ingredients together until the sugar is completely dissolved, and then you can add your cherry liqueur. Set this aside to cool to room temperature, and then once it has, you're going to brush each of your cakes with that cherry simple syrup, and it's just gonna add extra moisture to your cake. Obviously, a really important element to this cake is the cherries. So today I'm gonna to be using fresh cherries, but if cherries aren't in season where you are, you can just use canned cherries. Because I'm using fresh cherries, we need to pit these cherries. So I went and bought a cherry pitter and I had so much fun using this, but I didn't realize how messy cherries were. So make sure you're doing this at the sink so you're not getting cherry juice everywhere, which is definitely gonna stay in everything. Once you've done that, you wanna slice your cherries in half and add them to a large mixing bowl. We're gonna add some Kirsch cherry liqueur to those cherries and then fold it through. Let this sit covered with plastic wrap for about 30 minutes at room temperature. That cherry liqueur is gonna infuse into the cherries. Then you can add this to your cake. The next thing we're gonna do is whip our cream. This is really, really easy. We're gonna add some cream and vanilla to a large mixing bowl, along with some cherry liqueur if you like, that's completely optional. And we're gonna whip this up using an electric hand mixer until we reach stiff peaks. The last thing we're gonna be doing is making our chocolate ganache. This is gonna be sitting on top of our cake. Traditionally, not a part of the recipe, but you can add it if you like. I'm going to, and it's really easy to make. We're just gonna be adding some cream and chocolate into a large mixing bowl. We're gonna microwave it 20 seconds at a time, stirring each time until it's nice and smooth. Again, guys, you wanna make sure that your chocolate ganache is not warm or hot when you add it to your cake otherwise it'll cause the cream to melt. To make the chocolate curls that go around the sides of this cake, it's actually really, really easy and really, really fun. So we are gonna be melting some chocolate in the microwave. You can do this on top of a double boiler if you like, but I use the microwave to melt my chocolate. It's really, really easy. If you do it slowly, you don't risk burning the chocolate. I microwave it for 20 seconds at a time, stirring it each time in a microwave safe bowl until it's nice and smooth. Once you do have it nice and smooth, we're gonna pour it on top of a chopping board or you can use the back of a baking tray. It's really up to you, but it needs to be a flat surface. Once it's cooled and it's set completely at room temperature, Use a spoon to scrape away the chocolate and that'll help get your nice chocolate curls. You wanna transfer these to a bowl and then pop them in the fridge and let them sit in there and chill for about 30 seconds so that when you're putting them onto your cake with your hands, the warmth from your hands won't be melting them because they're nice and cooled. We've got all of our elements ready for this cake. We're ready to put it together. You wanna to add your first layer of cake on top of your serving plate. We're gonna add some cream, and then we're gonna add some of those chopped cherries on top of that cream. You wanna repeat that with the remaining layers.
And then we're gonna add our final layer of cream around the sides and on top of the cake. Get it as smooth as you can. It doesn't really matter if it's not super smooth because we're gonna be covering this cake up anyway. Once you've got it covered, you wanna add your chocolate curls around the sides of your cake. Then you want to fit the end of a piping bag with a open star tip. Frost some swirls of cream on top of your cake. Pour that room temperature ganache in the middle of that. Help spread it around with a spoon and then you're gonna finish this off with some fresh cherries on top. And guys, that is my Black Forest cake. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. If you wanna grab the recipe for this cake, it's gonna be in the link in the description box below. Click on that, it'll take you to the recipe. If you do make this cake, tag me on social media because I'd love to see your lovely creations. I'll see you all on the next episode of The Scram Line. Bye.